The physical body is the physical body. It is made of matter and it follows the rules of matter. Whether you are a spiritual being who happens to be scientific, a scientific being, someone identifies as a scientist who happens to be spiritual, so you're both. Whether you are a spiritual being who hates science or a scientific being who hates spirituality or someone who's neither spiritual nor scientific, either way, in every one of these circumstances, if you walk off the top of a building, you will fall to the ground. No one has wings and can fly. Regardless of how spiritual I may be, how enlightened I may be even, if I walk off the top of a building, I will fall to the ground. Because the law of gravity interacts with the physical material of my body in such a way that is completely separate from my experience spiritually. Now, one who is spiritual might have a very different experience of plummeting to their death than someone who is not spiritual. But in either case, you're going to fall down. Because of that law of science upon matter. If you stand in Ganga, you will get wet. No, you will get wet. <laughs> you will also feel, hopefully, peace and love, but the physical body will get wet. <laughs> Law of science. Spirituality is not about conquering science. The same God who created us created gravity. Newton didn't create gravity, he just discovered it, named it. The laws of nature exist because the same creator <coughs> created them. So spirituality is not against the laws of science. It's about how to realize you are not that which is subject to them. So the body is aging, for example, regardless of what pill you may take, what tonic you may drink, what I, I just got back from America last week in California, and I always laugh, you drive through the streets of LA, and wherever you look, there is someone else promising that behind their doors are the secrets of immortality, age reversal, age defying, young forever. I mean, amazing. A cream. <laughs> A mask. A wrap. Somehow, it's going to undo all of the laws of nature that have been in existence for billions of years. Of course not. Now, as we age, we get to make decisions. Do we prefer the color brown or yellow or black to the color gray? If so, people dye their hair. If not, we don't dye our hair. Either way, it has nothing to do with aging or not aging. The body is subject to these laws. It's going to age eventually. It's going to die eventually. Whether through sickness, whether through accident, whether through a mosquito bite, or whether through just at some point, or through coronavirus, or through at some point the body just 
the soul leaves the body. The point of spirituality is not how can I figure out how not to be subject to the laws of science. In fact, Puja Swamiji, my guru, tells a, a beautiful story of when he had first come here, going back now 50 plus years. And one day this saint came to the ashram who said, I can walk on water. And everybody was amazed, wow. And he showed them. He actually demonstrated. He walked out onto the river and he, he walked on the waters of Ganga. And everybody was amazed and they sat around him. How, how did you do that? He said, I've spent 40 years engaged in this very, very specific type of spiritual practice. And now I can do it. He says, if you want, I will teach you. So Puja Swamiji says to him, you know, for five rupees, this boat guy <laughs> will take me across the river and I can spend the next 40 years of my life in service of humanity rather than figuring out how to defy the laws of nature. It's not about the highest form of spirituality is not what kind of tricks can I do to defy the laws of nature. It's about how can I use that which I've been given in the best possible way for what it's been given to me for. If God had wanted us to fly, he would have given us wings. If he'd wanted us to be able to walk on water, we wouldn't be subject to the laws of gravity. But he's put us here with compassion, with love, with initiative, with creativity, with consciousness, so that we may use those to wake up, to realize the truth of who we are, and to use our lives in service of God in creation. So, spirituality is not the answer to this disease or that disease. I mean, yes, on a very basic level, we also know People who are spiritual actually do tend to have more robust immune systems. Separate subject, I happen to know it because I am a scientist. I love the science. I've done a lot of research in this. So we actually do know that people who are spiritual have robust immune systems, do tend to be healthier, But that's not, that's not the point. It's not you become spiritual so that you get a robust immune system. It's a beautiful byproduct of living in balance with the world. Because of course the flip side is we know that stress is correlated with something like 80-85% of illnesses. And so naturally, you can understand on a very simplistic level, if I'm deeply spiritual, if I'm grounded and rooted in faith, in something that's beyond the body, beyond my bank account, chances are I'm going to be less stressed out by every fluctuation in the stock market. Chances are I'm going to be less stressed by the bathroom scale, or my colleagues at work, or the traffic on the freeway. Therefore, immune system gets stronger. That's one way it works. There's other ways also it works. But the point is, that's a beautiful byproduct. It's not go to God so that you don't catch the flu this season. It's go to God. Because that's why you're here. 